I'm making this video for people who just got their MCAT score back and they're realizing that they're gonna have to take another year out of their life to restudy for it and take it next year. I'm making this video for a lot of non-traditional people that come to our channel trying to decide if they wanna go back to medical school. I'm making this video for anyone who didn't get you know, doesn't get interview invites this fall, or anyone who's just on the fence in general about going back to medical school to become a doctor. I hope this is actually educational and doesn't just come off as like a rant, because what I'm trying to do is walk you through what it actually looks like to to go through the process of becoming a doctor. Not the cute study with me TikToks, not the highlight reels of residency, you know, sort of the real thing. Now I am saying this as a medical student, I'm a fourth year medical student, so I don't have the lens of residency yet, but I work in a highly academic hospital and so I get to interface with residents a lot. So I just want to tell you my perspective of what this journey is like so far. Med school is hard, duh. Residency is harder and a lot of it does not feel heroic. It doesn't feel like TV shows. It doesn't feel like house. You're not like the first one to think of like this rare disorder that this patient comes in with. You're not dilly-dallying around the hospital like they do on scrubs and then having like these deep epiphanies every day. A lot of it has felt so far to me like box checking. A patient comes in with chest pain, you follow the acute coronary syndrome algorithm. You get an EKG, you get a chest x-ray, you get troponins, you, you know, put in orders to admit the patient, you write a note and then you move on. Someone comes in with back pain while well, you, you know, talk to them about it ad nauseum. You rule out red flags, you're checking boxes, you're charting the note, you're clicking through order sets. And there are moments of meaning, but they're sort of buried under like systems and structures and algorithms and EMR clicks. And to be clear, like medicine is not just an endless stream of people like thanking you for saving their life. And it's not even you feeling like you're saving lives for you know some of it, yes for some of the, the fields and everything then yes but in reality you're probably for the majority of your like residency and your training it's gonna be a lot more like you're trying to discharge a patient who doesn't want to leave or you're you know trying to set up the perfect like medication regimen for this patient who is probably gonna go home and not even do the medic like not even take the medications <laughs> or later on once you're a resident fellow or attending you know maybe like arguing with insurance about whether or not a patient needs a procedure. And that doesn't make medicine bad, and I don't wanna be all doom and gloom about it, but it's just like the reality. Even if you're a traditional student who goes through a college and med school and residency all back to back, med school and residency is gonna take your 20s and part of your 30s. And when you're 22, 23, and you're getting up really early and you're grinding and you're you know studying hours on end, you kind of feel cool, you kind of feel like a bad A. But I'm turning 27 this year and it's starting to feel a lot less cool <laughs> to you know miss like big moments in my family and friends lives to miss birthdays to miss you know weddings and stuff like that but obviously like i'm choosing to still go through all of medical school and to still do residency even though like i could do something else i could do ifd i could do a completely different career path that doesn't have anything to do with medicine and i'm still choosing to go through with it even though i'm starting to get real tastes of what medicine actually is why is that it's because when i have been in clinical medicine so whether my clerkships or before I was in med school, I was a medical assistant. When I've had these just nuggets of impactful encounters, they've actually meant a lot and they've been like a little golden thread that has just like kept me going through this process. And let me tell you, as a trainee, it has never been my intelligence that has kept me going. It has never been that I knew something that another person didn't. Because I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know any more than the people around me at the hospital. I am the dumbest one in the room every time. But I've had a patient who like, I really connected with she was a pediatric patient. And like, I would, my team would like dismiss me and be like, you can go home. And I would go to this patient's room and just like chat with her. Cause I just like vibed with her. I just really liked her. And like, I remember on the last day that I was there, she had told me that she was like making the school project and it was about some like biomedical something, something. But she like took time out of her day to like go through this school project and this presentation that she was like proud to show me. And she, I don't know, like we just had a connection that had nothing to do with her being in the hospital at all. It was not the medicine, it was the connection with the person. Other impactful times that I've had are when I've like sat down with a patient, talked them through, you know, something, this, that, or the other, and they've been like, 
Wow, thanks so much. I never realized that that's like what this medicine was used for or like what this procedure was actually doing that I've had several times. And again, like it's not the gratitude that like that was impactful for me. It was that I was able to like bridge a concept to a person and like how those things like could intermesh to actually improve their quality of life, which sounds like a bunch of like med school interview BS that you would say, but it's true. The prestige of being a doctor fades. Honestly, in this landscape, it feels like people think you're a con man if you're a doctor. So it's not necessarily the prestige that's gonna keep you going. The money is probably good in some fields especially, but like there are quicker and easier ways to get that amount of money. And it's not even the process of like you being able to fix things. Because a lot of times in medicine, you try to fix something and you can't. You have to sort of like find joy in trying to help a patient. Not necessarily helping them, but trying to. You show up, you think, you care, you do your best, you connect with people. And if that is something that gives you purpose, then maybe medicine is right for you. Maybe being a doctor is right for you. And I'm not saying that there aren't other like sort of reasons to go into medical school i'm just saying like you have to find that reason and it can't be your parents idea of why you want to go into medicine it can't be instagram or tiktok's idea of why you should go into medicine or your professors you shouldn't go into medical school just because you've made good grades all your life or just because you can you know i think the best way to find this reason in your own like self is like to actually get into clinical medicine and see what it's like like i said i was a medical assistant at an urgent care center before i started medical school and i loved it i wasn't doing what a doctor did but i got to see what the doctors did and i found it intoxicating so much so that that combined with some of the experiences that i've had now that i'm actually really getting into like the doctor's role in my clinicals and medical school. Those are the things that have kept me on this track to actually pursuing residency. Even when I, there are definitely times in medical school where I've been like, I don't think I wanna do this. Like, I don't think I have compelling enough reasons to stay in medicine. And I guess just a big disclaimer here, I've talked to multiple of my friends that, in, that are in medical school as well, and not everyone feels like this. <laughs> a lot of people have found more meaning and more validation in what they're doing in medical school than even I have. Again, so I'm just giving my perspective as someone who has found medical school very hard and the idea of pursuing residency and, go, and going through this whole process, I found this very difficult. So if you're still figuring it out, that's okay. I recommend if you have any time, like get into clinical medicine, see what, see what doctors do for real, for real, not on TV, not on TikTok. Then you can make that decision for yourself because this video is titled, should I be a doctor or something? I don't know if you should be a doctor. I think the old adage of like, if you can see yourself doing something else, then do that. I think it's like at least halfway true. Like maybe you should try that, especially if you have some time, there's nothing wrong with taking a couple years off of the whole process of going through undergrad and medical school. Like I think gap years can be very beneficial for like trying other things. But at the end of the day, I really just want everybody watching this video to know like that medicine does not feel like TV. It doesn't even feel that cool <laughs> most of the time. And you're gonna go through so many years where you feel like like you're the dumbest person in the room, like where you feel like you really just don't know very much. And to have to humble yourself for years and years and years, especially when like people that are pre-meds are oftentimes like in intelligent people, you know, maybe they're the top of their class type thing. It's difficult because you're gonna be put into a, you're, you know, a big fish in a little pond right now. You're about to be put in a very, very big pond and you're gonna feel really little for a long time. And I just want you guys to know that that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go into medicine, but it just means that like that it, it is a, a decision you should think critically about. I don't even really know like why I'm making this video. I guess I've just made like several videos recently on like, you know, med school application and interview stuff and things like that. And a lot of it is like, why do you want to go into medicine? And I have talked about how to answer that question, but I haven't talked about like the process of coming to the conclusion that you even do want to go into medicine or that you wanna be a doctor specifically. Cause there's a ton of different paths you could go in medicine that are different than being a doctor if you just like the medical field. But anyway, so if you are still working through this process or you're second guessing things or you're trying to figure out a good answer for this on for med school applications, interviews, that kind of thing, that's what IFD is here for. We do MCAT stuff, but especially on YouTube, we're, we're branching into application stuff and just in, in general, like life and medicine type stuff. So let me know if you guys liked or hated this video. It was way different than our normal stuff. 
But if you do decide to go into, you know, into the medical school and all that different stuff, just know that IFD has your back. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.